Spurs are pushing forward with their attempts to sign a 21-year-old Portuguese wing wizard. Meanwhile, reports suggest that Tottenham are also front-runners to sign wonderkid forward Desiree Due. And the FA wants Sir Gareth of Southgate to lead England into the next World Cup. Cup. All this and more in today's episode of Daily Premier League Transfer News. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please do press like, press subscribe if you haven't already. Become a subscriber for daily content and also you can become a member. Only a pound a month. All the details in the description box and that really helps me make this daily content for you. But let's get into it. Starting at Spurs and uh, a bit of a new rumour coming in as of yesterday. Portuguese winger from Porto, Francisco Conceição. A 21-year-old right winger Cuts in from the left. He had an impressive season last season. Scored eight goals and provided eight assists in 43 appearances for Porto. Played in the Champions League. One thing I'd say about him, he does look like a very exciting player. Plays number 10 uh, in the number 10 shirt for Porto. So obviously highly rated and plays for the Portuguese national team. But he's quite slight physically. And as we know, and as you've mentioned in the comments, and please do keep your comments coming in, guys. I love replying to them and getting that chat going. But uh, as mentioned in the comments, a lot of the people watching these videos do not like any links to players who have maybe what could be described as the Brian Hill factor. Now look, Conceição is not as small as Brian Hill, not in height or kind of in terms of body shape and stature, but he's not the most physically powerful. And in terms of getting a player in from abroad, where we know it sometimes takes... A long time to adjust uh, and and really get used to the Premier League. I'm not sure that Conceição has the physicality to come straight in and really uh, make it happen in the Premier League. What I would say though is if Tottenham are genuinely, and it sounds like we are, looking at players in that right wing position who are left footed to cut inside, that spells danger for Deki Kulisevsky I think. Um, unless of course Big Ange Postacoglu has in mind something that I talked about earlier this week whether Dejan Kulisevsky could possibly be an option to play as a force nine in his system. In which case, yeah, I can see why he'd potentially be bringing in another left-footed player who can cut in from the right to provide competition for Brennan Johnson, who's obviously more of a right-footed player, looks to go outside his fullback. So I do like Conce Sao. Um, definitely go and have a look at him if you haven't already. He's clearly an incredibly gifted player, comes from a great footballing pedigree as well. Um, but whether or not he has the physical physicality for the Premier League, I'm not sure. Meanwhile, according to Ben Jacobs, who was on the brilliant Last Word on Spurs podcast, their live YouTube show, if you don't listen to Last Word on Spurs or watch it, make sure you do. Ricky Sachs does an amazing job over there. But Ben Jacobs is on there and he says that Tottenham are the front runners, certainly in terms of Premier League clubs, for Desiree Due from Wren. They've already already reached out to the player in terms of personal terms. They've had a listen to what he wants there and it all seems to be okay. And they've had early stage conversations with Wren as well. I know that Desiree Due is a player that a lot of us are getting very excited about. Kind of that mythical dribbly winger that uh, we've been looking for. Someone who can do something a bit different. And if Tottenham are indeed the front runners, the favourites to get him over the line... That would be a very exciting deal. Maybe I'm getting too hopeful. Maybe I'm being naive. But imagine if we could get someone like Eze in as a, a kind of number eight, number ten uh, competition for matters and, and potential starter. And then also we could get in a, a winger to do things a bit differently on the left. Could be a very exciting summer. Talking about that, according to Fabrizio Romano, he's talked a little bit more about Pedro Neto. He says in terms of Neto and Tottenham, it really depends on the fee. He's had many injuries, so Tottenham would be happy to try again for Pedro Neto, but only if the conditions, as in the transfer fee, isn't crazy, which is why it depends on Wolves. Well, look, if I put my Wolves hat on, which I don't put on very often, then you'd say, you know, he's a great player for them. He's vital to them when he's fit. So why would they sell him for anything less than what they think he is worth, which I think is upwards of £60 million? If you're in Tottenham's shoes, of course you're saying, well, he's been injured more in the last... I think three seasons I saw a stat, then uh, some of the Tottenham players were, uh, sorry, some of the, sorry, he's been out more last season than some of the Tottenham players have for the last three seasons. So that shows how injury prone he is. So it makes sense that Tottenham are not willing to kind of go top dollar, but I wonder if this one's going to turn into a bit of a stalemate. Let me know what you think of Neto in the comments. I, I've read a lot of comments from you so far saying that you think the injuries, uh, the injury situation is a bit too risky. Meanwhile, uh, over to Crystal Palace, because as I mentioned before, Spurs still in for Eberet Chiesa. But apparently, um, Crystal Palace are doing everything they can behind the scenes to keep Eza at the club. 
Uh, Oliver Glasner is determined to keep him with sources saying from within the club that the optimism is high about having him there for the new campaign. Well, the reality of that is from everything we hear is that Eza has a 60 million plus bonuses release clause. So it'll come down to whether Tottenham are willing to go there. I do wonder, however, because of another report that's coming out yesterday about Crystal Palace, which is that they are interested in bringing Marcus Edwards from Sporting Lisbon to Selhurst Park. Now, obviously, Spurs have a 35% sell-on clause for Marcus Edwards. Could a deal potentially be done between Palace and Spurs where Spurs agree to take off that 35% sell-on cut for the Marcus Edwards deal if they can get Eza over the line at a value that maybe is a little less than that £60 million release clause. Maybe it's pie in the sky. Maybe I'm just being hopeful, but who knows. Obviously, uh, Mickey van der Ven went out when England beat the Dutch the other night, uh, and the Spurs players have been uh, replying to something that he wrote on Instagram. And I just wanted to see the, uh, the James Madison reply to Mickey van der Ven's Instagram post about his proudness of how he did for Holland and how Holland did this summer. Uh, Madison said, Proud of you, son. Don't have too many beers on holiday so Matt is clearly back in pre-season excited for the new season wants the international players back telling them not to uh, enjoy themselves too much on their holiday but surely Mickey van der Ven now just gone out in the semi-final he should get at least three weeks off I would have thought he needs a proper rest been very long season for him uh, meanwhile some more infrastructure news from Alistair Gold Spurs have received further approvals required to continue the construction of their 30 story hotel that will stand alongside the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium that'll be just kind of behind uh, the south stand now I know a lot of you will be angry a lot of you kind of Enoch haters saying all we care about is infrastructure but it's more money coming into the club Uh, and of course who knows based on what Chelsea have done maybe we'll be able to sell that hotel to ourselves further down the line if we get into any financial difficulty Uh, it's been a bit of a slow news day uh, I think because the Euros are kind of coming to their end now but I am envisaging like next week the uh, transfer news will really start to heat up Uh, but that's all I've got for Spurs in terms of their news at the moment but on to kind of more general transfer news Joshua Zerksy is a here we go to Manchester United that deal has been done and he's having a medical today United didn't trigger the clause but they're paying slightly above what the clause was worth 40 million euros so that they can spread it out over a number of years that is uh, I guess Ineos is doing now that Ineos have got a 25% stake in Man United they are trying to sort out the finances and not pay huge fees up front Uh, apparently United's move for Matthias de Litt is really at the final stages as well well Bayern getting 50 million euros for that Uh, United trying to structure the proposal with add-ons performance related add-ons included United expecting those Xerxes and Delit deals to be done by early next week at the latest meanwhile I mentioned Danny Olmo yesterday a lot of you getting potentially excited that Spurs have him on their list Apparently Man United and Bayern Munich are both interested in signing him. His release clause has been extended from Monday for another week or so because Spain have reached that final. And uh, it is still a £50 million release clause from RB Leipzig. But Man United and Bayern Munich now interested in him too. Also, Al Ittihad in Saudi are looking to take uh, Casemiro from Man United. His legs have gone, I think. I think it's time for him to go. And Ruud van Nistelrooy and René Hacker have joined United's coaching staff. Uh, that is a deal that's been uh, in the offing. Uh, Mitchell van der Gaag and Benny McCarthy leave the club. I thought um, Steve McLaren might leave the club as well, but he hasn't. So McLaren's still on Eric Ten Hag's uh, coaching staff, which I find very odd. Over to Man City, they want to sell Jao Cancelo this summer and uh, apparently could be signed for less than €20 million. I cannot see him playing for another Premier League club. I'm sure he's on huge astronomical wages, but what a player he is. I'm sure he'll try and find his way back to Aston Villa. Meanwhile, a surprising move over at Aston Villa. Moussa Diaby is a great talent, much talked about when he signed over there and has, has had some great moments for Aston Villa, but doesn't always start. He has aggrieved a move to Saudi Arabia as well. Al Etihad again. The uh, negotiations with Aston Villa are ongoing, apparently. Um, over to some England news, international news. Gareth Southgate is the first manager in the history of of the Euros to go 13 matches without defeat. We play Spain next. They've won all six of their games in this European Championships. So it's going to be a hell of a game. Meanwhile, the FA are desperate for Gareth Southgate to stay as England manager and lead us into the next World Cup. How do you guys feel about that? Do you want Southgate to stay? A lot of you obviously angry at the boring nature of the football that's been played. I've been a little bit livid about it as well. But he's reached our first final on foreign soil. You cannot downplay the importance of that. And I'm going to stress again what I think about international management. I think 99% of it is kind of politics. It's the ability to deal with the media. And most importantly, it's the ability the ability to deal with the players. 
and make them feel comfortable at these tournament situations where they've got like 50 days away from their family. Make them feel like a group. Make them make the morale high. Make them love playing with each other. He's the first manager in English history since Alf Ramsey, not only to be successful in these tournaments, but also to get players who are from different cliques, different club cliques, to really work together in terms of the national team. And that cannot be understated. I know a lot of people think, oh, we could bring in a, a manager who will play more progressive football and, and more beautiful football. And that may be the case. But if the players don't like him, if the players don't want to play for him, if the players don't want to come on international duty, then that will be a complete waste of time. And that is something that Southgate has really got going for him. And also, I have to say, that first half display against Holland, we played some unbelievable football. And it just shows when the players have the confidence and the opposition are not just playing 11 men behind the ball in a 3-5-2, 5-3-2 formation, then England have the players to play beautiful football, whether that's with or without Gareth Southgate as a manager. But like I said, let me know in the comments what you think about Southgate. Do you think it's time for someone new? And if it is, who do you want that to be? The only person I can think of who I wouldn't mind replacing Southgate is Maurizio Pochettino. But I think he's probably too young to get into international management. Speaking of someone too young to get into international management, the USA have sacked their manager, Greg Berhalter, after a very disappointing tournament this summer. And they've made Jurgen Klopp their top candidate, according to The Independent. But according to The Athletic, Klopp is not interested in the role and wants a break from manager. Meanwhile, Germany have long-term aims to make Jurgen Klopp their manager. That is something I could see happening, but I'm not sure Klopp's done with club management yet. It'd be really interesting to see where he turns up. I think he's one of the elite managers in the game. He said he won't manage anywhere else in England. Could I see him maybe going to like a Barcelona um, to kind of reawaken that kind of sleeping giant? Maybe. I don't know. Where could you see Klopp ending up? Anyway, a bit of a shorter episode today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Do press that subscribe button, press like, and press the notification bell as well so you know when my content is coming in to your inbox. Also, please do um, become a member. Only a pound a month. It's so helpful to me. All the details in the description box below. And have a great weekend, guys. And of course, Sunday night, England in the final of the European Championships against the Spanish. Can we do it? Can we do it? Is it coming home?